Christmas. Ever since I started teaching, it seemed like all I had the time or money to do was work. But this Christmas, when a mound of ungraded labs were stacked two feet high on my desk, one of my students from a few semesters ago came to visit me. She came in and we talked about our families, the holidays, and whether or not Christmas lights should be left up after December. It wasn't chestnuts roasting by the fire, or hot cocoa, or candy canes. I didn't even have a sad artificial pine tree in the corner of the lab to set the holiday mood. It was just good conversation and the feeling of no longer being alone. That night, I drove home happy, even in the dreadful winter weather. The road was mostly empty, but I saw a woman shivering by the open hood of her car. It felt so warm to have had someone care about me for even just an afternoon, so I pulled over in front of her and opened my door. When you see someone on the side of the road with an open hood or a flat, you probably drive right by them, and I don't blame you. I've done the same thing so many times, but standing on the shoulder, knowing that my girls were just two hours away in Washington, D.C., waiting for me, I regretted every time I didn't stop. I was supposed to drive down to New York City to see them, but an hour into my drive, my check engine light came on. Then I was on the shoulder of I-95, praying for a miracle. For 45 minutes, I tried to accept that I wasn't <coughs> going to make it home. I called my girls and told them. But sure enough, a miracle happened. A woman with kind eyes pulled over. She said she knew nothing about cars, but she could give me a ride. Can you believe that? All the way to D.C. for nothing in return. She didn't know how much this meant to me, and I have never been more thankful in my entire life. I made it home in time to see my girls, to be together on Christmas Eve. That was the greatest gift I could ever receive. I hope my presence was a gift to them as well. <laughs>